Good evening, this is Bruce and welcome to my shop. Um, this is uh, the, the project we've got at the moment is number three core cutter. Uh, the order came in last week and I've gathered up all the parts for it. Um, there's um, quite a few uh, videos on my channel about uh, the previous one that I made. So this is a repeat uh, and tonight I'd like to talk about the boring uh, boring and tapping in uh, using the, the milling machine. Um, the the part that we've got, <coughs> we've got all the parts, uh, the clamping arrangement here that uh, needs to be put together, um, and all the all the drilling and tapping and, and fitting and so forth, shafts, arm piece to go on there, the two beams the blade from tool steel that still has to be made, drilled uh, and cut at the angles and so forth. Um, all, the, all the items are here in my, uh, in my booklet um, to be made up and uh, that, will, that will then produce careful. that will then produce uh, another, another core cutter like this one. Um, so tonight we're, we're starting to battle away on it and the part that I'm, uh, we're talking about at the moment is this block and this block is what holds the cylinder in place and, and the two channels uh, feed down through it. So I've shaped up this block to, to, to the sizes and I've um, now mounted it in the, um, in the milling machine and I've gone ahead and started uh, drilling it, getting it ready for tapping. And so I'll walk you through now the stages of doing this. I'm doing the whole job here in the mill rather than at some point moving it over to the lathe. Um, so here we have, we have the part on the, on the mill. Um, I'll just make some adjustments here. Hopefully this will all come into... Things. There's, there's the part there um, ready to go. And uh, I'm now in the last stage of the drilling, and uh, then I'm going into the tapping. Uh, I'm going to tap it. So we'll show you the, what we've done so far, and uh, we'll talk a bit about the drills, pre-drilling, etc., uh, etc. Et I'll just move that up. And hopefully that'll capture me okay. Um, so yeah, we can talk about it. So. After centering, centering uh, everything up, we, uh, the first thing we did was um, we fitted up with, with the chuck and, um, and the centre drill and we drilled the centre pilot. We then uh, progressed with this 10mm um, drill bit to drill the pilot hole. And here we need to talk about pilots for, bit, for large uh, drill bits. My, my intention was to drill through uh, with a 32 millimetre hole for the beginning and the reason I've taken this, this size drill is because when you are drilling when, when you are drilling uh, with a twist drill the pilot should be at least the thickness here or larger uh, and that's ideal uh, that because Otherwise, you've got to put a lot of pressure on this end to punch through. But if you provide that pilot, you're, you're providing a guide for the, um, for the drill to go through and the web will then be free to follow through. So and this particular drill bit um, is a standard, has been standard um, ground, but then I've also given it a groove back in here. Now, with all my drilling in aluminium, I use kerosene. I have my uh, my little squeeze my little squeeze bottle here of kerosene, and I use that liberally for the drilling. And of course, we also do the pecking. So while I was drilling with that, I produced this is the swarf I've produced. You don't want any longer than that because it starts getting right out here and swing a ray and it can smack you. So they are pecked every time to pull these out and keep it clean and that's paramount with any drilling is to keep the swarf away uh, with the larger drills it's very easy for them to come out of the flutes but the smaller drills that can be far worse 
and aluminium as much as it's soft it can bind up very quickly so I drilled this out by using my Morse 4 taper ISO 40 Morse 4 taper in the in the head um, in the head here and then I've removed that and I've put in the Morse 3 which is a similar um, and I fitted my rotor brooch adapter to it and I put in a 36 millimeter rotor brooch and that's the diameter I need in order to be able to tap the thread in this block and so um, we now come to the stage uh, of completion, completing this so I'll run through the last cutting um, of this uh, of the rotor brooch and once again the rotor brooch must be cleared often otherwise it can create uh, problems the rotor brooch is thin it's only got a thin wall and any binding will create pressure on it and it'll collapse and smash um, there's a high speed this one here in particular is high speed I'm running about 200 odd revs uh, liberal amounts of uh, of kerosene and we'll finish cutting through with the rotor brooch and then we'll go on to the tapping Let's see if we can get this down there a bit better so you can see the action hopefully that'll be all right and we'll get going That light will be better for the film or not. Um, anyway, we'll go with that. So I'm down halfway. And we're complete pecking it all the time. If we feel any, any resistance, it means we need to clean out the flutes. This has saved me boring, setting up the four jaw and boring it in the lathe, which is the way I've done them in the past. But I'm always looking for ways of um, being a bit creative with this and saving time, etc. So there we go, we're, we're through with that. We've completed the drilling um, and we'll now move on to tapping. I've zeroed that in, so we'll move, we'll move away, lock that up, take that out, take that out. We'll fix, we'll deal with that later. Uh, we'll go back in with our. With our chuck, and we'll fit a, a center point in this. We'll get a center point. <coughs> One tool I don't earn, own at the moment uh, that, um, is a um, is a tap follower, and I must make one. Uh, I've had them before, but this time, uh, this time around, um, I don't have it, and uh, so that's one of the little tools that I need to provide myself with. Uh, this is the tap. Uh, I know all the time my buddies on the on YouTube 